What happens when a group of people who love their MMO so much that they would spend countless hours of their lives rebuilding the online world that they once had? What happens when you really need to scratch that MMO PvP itch? Warhammer Online is what happens. And let me tell you, this game is thriving. Warhammer Online is a free-to-play classic-style MMORPG. You can choose between two different factions, the Forces of Order and the Forces of Chaos. These two factions fight for control over specific zones and areas as early as your starting zone, and where you would think that a game that was re-released in 2014 would be sorely lacking in players, you would be absolutely wrong. <laughs> this game is thriving, absolutely thriving. And not only all the glorious PvP of the game, the open world from Nordland, Norska, Ulthwan, Reichland, and more, you can truly get lost just fading into the mortal realms. There are unique missions, evolving public quests, even timed PvE events that have you rushing around the entire zone trying to complete them all. Even the abilities for your classes provide tons of complexity and uniqueness, but all of this great game would not be possible if it wasn't for a dedicated community that did not give up on this game. The fantasies of Warhammer have been around for quite a while. Warhammer Fantasy Battle the First Edition was released in 1983, and it was such a deep-rooted fantasy genre that it has thrived for, well, longer than I've been alive. In 2008, the IP took a stab at an MMORPG in Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning. While at first it seemed to do well, eventually it faded, and on the fifth anniversary of the game, EA, Mythic, and Bioware announced that they would be closing the servers and ending the lied service. A mad rush began to gather as much information and data that they could from the live service to copy it over to an emulator so the game could stay afloat. It initially floundered for a little bit. However, Diox, one of the primary creators of the Warhammer emulator, had lost motivation and stopped working on it, dropping the custom server less than six months later. The Warhammer emulator team continued off of his work and it still wasn't fully there, but they persisted, and later that year, Return to Reckoning officially launched in June 2014. Since the launch, the developers have built and polished the world of Re-Reckoning into the thriving game that it is today. But what makes it truly stand out? Playing other MMOs such as World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2, I love the PvP in an MMO. Something about having your unique character destroying other players in large-scale areas, battlegrounds, it just feels right, man. <laughs> Now, with an ongoing conflict of various races in Warhammer, it kind of makes sense that this game does PvP very, very well. But the open world PvE and questing built in the expansive lore of Warhammer really does take it onto another level. And with said lore, you can really create and play some unique classes as each race has its own unique style. Take for example the Empire. You can play as a Witch Hunter, which focuses on a mix of melee, ranged, and stealth style combats. No other race can play as a Witch Hunter, only the Empire. If you wanted to play a melee DPS for the High Elves, for example, then you best be prepared to play as a White Lion. Each one of the six total races have four unique classes tied to them. The only similarity of any of these classes and races is that each of the races have four classes to fit four roles. One melee DPS, one range DPS, one tank, and one healer. But each one of those roles are different, which offers a ton and ton of different special playstyles. I mean, I went with the Witch Hunter because he has a sword, a pistol, and a Cheerio hat. I mean, what what what's there not to love? <laughs> but the game truly does offer a lot of different playstyles and different abilities. And in my short time, I haven't seen anything quite like the Witch Hunter, as compared to fighting against, like, say, a Witch Elf, which is a melee DPS for the Dark Elves, and they play completely different, although they do offer some stealth. Not to mention the questing and the story to flesh out what we are doing in that zone in that area, but the public quests, which I'll cover in a minute, do really add some extra layers to the game outside of what it may be better known for, which is the PvP. On top of the interesting classes, the developers still put tons and tons of time into updating the game, as well as fixing any bugs that they may find. All in all, these are really great signs for a free-to-play game. Did I mention that? It's free-to-play. Mash all these specialized classes into a classic game engine and throw some PvP in there, and it really does offer something special. But... Let's talk about some of the other things that the game is doing very well. So despite the game being made only by a few developers and upkept by a very fervent and dedicated community, the game moves and plays incredibly well. 
With me going as the Empire, I end up in Nordland paired against the Norska. And holy crap, this entire area has some really good classic MMO feels. Not only for the traditional questing and the combat, that's that's a huge win for me, but a mega win is the public quests. These are constantly working real-time events that can be progressed by completing the objectives in the area, such as killing so many mobs or killing a specific mob, capturing a node or what have you. As you progress the public quest, it gets more intensive, suggesting more and more players to assist with. Now, this of course isn't mandatory by any means, as you can kind of push through these events solo, it'd just be slower and more more difficult <laughs> but i have found it helpful to have a couple of players at your back to make things move faster then depending on your effort that you put into the event you have a greater chance at winning a loot bag and at the end it seems like not only going to be currencies but items too this seems like a really cool feature because it almost has a heavier incentive to work harder rather than just punch a participation ticket another great feature in my mind is the ability to go into lower level zones and start the quest chains there you get the ability like right out the gate to jump to each of the zones and start their own stories if you would like it seems like it really encourages players to try the different areas and try the different zones. And of course, I've already mentioned in those starting zones, the PvP in this game is just fantastic. It's quite literally in your first starting zone, within the first like five levels, you're able to jump in and start kicking teeth in. It literally took me like no time whatsoever to get into a giant PvP match. And honestly, I was shooting and damaging as much as I could safely, despite me being terrified to get instantly bursted inside the enemy's death ball. It had a really good, almost like Alterac Valley feel to it from World of Warcraft. I mean, tons of players damaging, running around while we're doing our best to defend the area. I did almost get instantly gibbed and i died so of course my first step after this is to do what any respectable competitive pvp player would do and go to the forums and complain that the other class was just overpowered and the devs need to fix it <laughs> the player versus player in this game feels so intuitive because of its inclusion of the opening level to the point that i wasn't really surprised that this was the main part of the game at least from what i can tell the, now the pvp in this game is great because you can also gain renown as well as your normal leveling i read more into this as the max level cap for players is level 40 but the renown cap is at 255 which apparently no ever no players ever legitimately reach i'm guessing because it, it hits a very high exponential curve renown ranks are incredibly important because not only does it offer you some cosmetics of course but at higher levels it'll allow you to equip some of the strongest items in the game in fact it seems that the end game is almost centrally focused around pvp in this game so that's that's really interesting renown points are earned basically by participating in various pvp activities killing players healing allies who are killing players capturing objectives and such in the area you earn the renown ranks and then you can spend those points on renown abilities which offer a number of different buffs and bonuses that can be respect without penalty such as increasing outgoing damage, modifying some of your abilities and more. Now, I'm not 100% on this, but I believe that these bonuses only apply to PvP, so keep that in mind. And again, if I am wrong, please tell me in the comments down below. The classes in the game were another one of my favorite features, as I mentioned, but I also really enjoyed the way that we learned abilities. The basic abilities are learned on their own as you play and you reach certain levels. But at certain level increments, you also learn mastery levels, which allow you to choose a specific mastery to customize your class even further. I especially loved the Path of Inquisition look for my Witch Hunter. Lots of dots over time, you can even like silence some of their healing, it's, it's really, really cool. Regardless, you can build your class in any way that you want to match the playstyle that you would like, which is honestly one of my favorite parts. Now, with all that being said, I did have some minor tech issues, which were more funny than like annoying or a nuisance. Things like my character animation canceling when summoning my mount or just being stuck standing on my mount. <laughs> what the? <laughs> What's the horse doing? <laughs> if you see riders off in the distance, their horse's legs don't really move. They just kind of like eat or eat or clip clop all the way across the map. I cracked up at these. I'm 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 not even gonna lie. But these aren't even bad game breaking things. These are just like little nuisances that I could see turning some people away. But I just have I had a hilarious thing with it. Another great plus for this game is the area of reputation. As you are working in the area, questing, completing public quests, PVPing, and all that, you earn reputation. And crossing specific tiers will allow you to basically get free gear, potions, and more just by doing what you were doing anyway. I really did enjoy this aspect as it allowed me to 
almost double my time. I could do PVP, I could do PVE, and still be earning the reputation that I need. On top of that, the chat in the area was exploding with messages. It really seemed like there's a ton of people playing this game, and even grouping despite me it being only in the early starting zones. Also, I do have to shout out this one player who actually recognized me on my character. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I feel Warhammer Online is drastically different to other MMOs that were released around that time. Specifically, I like to compare it against like Guild Wars 1, even Vanilla WoW. Like all these games in my mind captured the essence of a fantastic adventure and open sprawling world. Every single level you fought for felt important. And this is a key to having a fantastic experience all around. When I looked at Warhammer Online, I felt like it was so much more brutal given the heavy emphasis on the PvP in the game. Now, I know some people can immediately be turned away from this game entirely just because of the notion that PvP is a heavy emphasis, and some people absolutely abstain from any type of PvP because they think PvP is bad, but I disagree in this game. The way that the player versus player is encouraged is almost intuitive, and it makes for a hell of a good time with the sheer amount of quests that push you into the PvP areas and to explore with allies, you almost get this feeling that you were helping the war effort and tagging into battle to fight back invading forces. Without communication, I still felt that I had a massive team at my side to win. It felt like I was a part of something greater even though I wasn't giving the topped PvP sweaty plays. It was honestly a really good time. Now, personally playing Warhammer Online, I attacked it the same way that I do normal MMOs or, well, classic MMOs. And I don't believe that this is the correct way. See, while it has the skin of a traditional MMO, the classes, main story, quests, crafting even, this game has a heavy focus on PvP that I had to completely shift my focus of what is important in this game. While yes, the PvP activities are fun and the traditional quests may be interesting, if not all the systems in this game seem to drive you straight for that sweet PvP action. Once I understood this about the game, I had a hell of a lot better time playing through it. Killing enemies, driving them back, I forgot how much fun these roaming death balls could be. Once I learned how the game was meant to be played, it made for a lot easier learning curve and I could cater my playstyles for it to make sense. I hadn't scratched a good PvP itch in a very long time and bursting down a foe from the shadows has been some incredibly fun experiences in this game. That's not even mentioning like the scenarios that seem to be more traditional instance PvP matches like a battleground so to speak. While they still seem just as large as any open world PvP event, they have more precise win-loss conditions and that was that was a lot of fun. But as I spent more time playing, I understood my Witch Hunter a lot better like what combos were working, how to get as much damage off that I needed to be able to escape if things turned south. Now the big thing that I noticed is that the levels were balanced. We all were the same level, despite me even being below the recommended level that was given. I definitely benefited from having true higher level skills, as it seems I would have access to more abilities. Now, I don't believe that you are level locked on any ability. Say, for example, you are a true level 20, but you get scaled down to level 15. I, I don't believe you lose the level 20 abilities that you would have. However, if I am wrong on this, you can correct me in the comments down below. Now, I will be honest with you. I probably spent about two hours just running around trying to get in whatever PvP action I could, burning my target with Inquisition damage over time and running away. It was a really good feeling, despite purging all the heretics and dying quite a bit. <laughs> so should you play the game? Absolutely. Even if you have a no strict PvP mindset, this game feels less like a PvP game and more like a player versus player versus environment MMORPG. You can work together as a team and contribute in your own way to achieve a victory against enemy forces. It puts much less stress onto the single player to push and win against all odds versus working with the group together to figure out a way to win. It was incredible, trust me. Give this game a shot and you'll be really surprised how much fun you have. Now, I have been going through playing some of the older MMORPGs, and if you are into anything in Tolkien's universe, then playing Lotro, Lord of the Rings Online, may be one of the best games that you played in 2024. You can find that experience here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks. <laughs>